It's another Hello Healthy, a Dignity Health podcast with Bill Klaproth. Knee replacement surgery can help solve stiffness or knee pain that makes simple activities difficult. Surgery may also be the best option if other treatments or medications haven't been successful. And here to talk with us about orthopedic knee revisions is Dr. Carl Balch, an orthopedic surgeon at Dignity Health. Dr. Balch, thanks for your time. So for someone who has had a previous knee replacement surgery, what are the main causes of knee problems? Sure. So, you know, when you have a knee replacement, there's different kind of classes of things that can go wrong or problems that can happen to it. There's things where they can have problems kind of from the get-go, meaning, you know, if the alignment on the knee replacement when it was placed in was not quite uh, correct, then that can make it function poorly after surgery. Or if there's other things like, you know, the angles and positions that things are put in, that can create different problems. Uh, There's things where the knee replacement can be uh, unstable or make the knee less stable so it can give out on you or you can fall down. And part of that can be based on the way it's put in or the parts and kind of as the way they're in as well. So those are all kind of very early ways that knee replacements can have problems. There's kind of middle kind of range uh, of where things can have problems, meaning that, you know, they're a little further out where someone has an injury, a fall, or some kind of accident where they can either damage the knee replacement or the parts or they could start to collapse, things like that. And then there's the long-term ways that knee replacements fail, and that's more about, you know, the plastic liner in between the knee replacement can wear out over time. I make the analogy with my patients to tread on a tire. You know, over time, your tires kind of wear out, you know, the longer you use them. And most knee replacements, the average knee replacement lasts about 15 to 20 years before that plastic kind of wears all the way out. Uh, And once that happens, you know, the knee replacement can start to get looser, be more unstable, and have problems. So what are the common symptoms, then, that somebody would experience when the knee is going bad, if you will? Yeah, sure. So, you know, knee replacements, you know, if they're having more pain, you know, a knee replacement is really done as a pain-relieving procedure. So... If you're having a lot of pain with it ever since it was done, that may be something abnormal or something wrong. If it's something where your pain has been getting worse, that's always a big red flag to me. You know, a knee replacement should either stay the same or get better. It should never be hurting more. Um, that's, that's a red flag that something may be kind of awry. Or if it's giving out, unstable on you, you know, people have falls with these sometimes. You know, that can also be a sign that maybe something with the knee replacement is not correct. Uh, Those can all be, you know, problems that can be based on the way the components are aligned, the way things are positioned. All that can be really important on, you know, if it hurts, if it's stable, if it's giving out or causing problems. So at what point would you need to go in for more surgery or, again, uh, replace what has already been replaced? When is surgery needed? Yeah, so whenever I see a patient who's had a knee replacement done elsewhere and they're coming to see me for an opinion about what's going on, we always check to see kind of the, you know, emer- not quite emergency, but the more urgent things that can be wrong. So we always check for infection or damage to the metal or other components and things like that. Now, if there's a fracture or an infection or something like that, obviously that's something you kind of can't let that go. You kind of got to fix that. Uh, so I always look for the got to fix it stuff first. And if, it's, if there's no got to fix it stuff that's damaged or messed up, then we look at for the other things that are things that can kind of uh, reduce the function or kind of you know, make it not quite work as well. And those are things that can be fixed with surgery. But first, you can also try therapy, braces, I mean, a lot of other non-surgical things first. So if I identify problems and it's nothing catastrophic, first we'll try the non-surgical stuff first. And if that's not working and it's, you know, reducing your quality of life, you know, the activities of daily living that you do are harder and harder. So the basic stuff you need to do day to day is tough. Then that's where you start considering, you know, undergoing a revision knee surgery. Uh, So it's really about pain, function, what else have you tried? And then also what exactly the problem is, you know, more severe problems are not going to do as well without surgery to fix it. More, you know, kind of manageable problems. Some of those require surgery and then some of them don't. I like that. The got to fix it stuff first. So Dr. Balch, let me ask you this. What about partial versus total knee replacement? What are the unique benefits of each? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I, I really, really enjoy partial knee replacement. Now, 
Uh, when you look at partial and total knee replacements, most people that you've probably met who've had a knee replacement, the most common thing is for people to get a total knee replacement. And that's because most orthopedic doctors will do a total knee replacement. Now, there's a more specialized procedure called a partial knee replacement. And what that does is that only replaces a small section of the knee. So it doesn't replace all of the areas of the knee like a total does. It just replaces one particular area. Now, when they look at the data on partial knee replacements and total knee replacements, a partial knee replacement is better than a total knee replacement in basically every single way you can think of except for two things. So it has you know, better range of motion, it recovers faster, there's less complications, less risk of blood clots, faster surgery, less time in the hospital, less blood loss, I mean, on and on and on. So they're really, really wonderful, but there's two things you got to keep in mind for a partial knee replacement. One is because it only replaces one section of the knee, you can still get arthritis in the other sections of the knee. So you really got to be the right person. You have to have arthritis just in one section. And when they looked at the knee replacements, a total knee replacement versus the partial knee replacement, and they looked at all the knee replacements in the entire country, a total knee replacement lasts longer on average. And that makes sense if you think about it, because a partial knee replacement, if you only replace one section, you can get arthritis in the other section, and then, you know, it needs to be kind of redone or have a redo on it. So the average length, you know, how long does a partial knee replacement last? The average length on that is about 10 to 15 years, where the average length or how long a total knee replacement lasts is 15 to 20 years. So there's a 5 to 10 year difference about there on average when you look at everybody across the country. And that's, again, that's an average. So some of those people are lasting, you know, much longer and, you know, kind of varies. Um, But yeah, so you got to be kind of the right person for the partial and you got to understand, you know, okay, you know, how long is this potentially going to last? You're getting a functional benefit where, you know, the knee replacement will feel more natural and work better, but it may not last as long as that total was. And so whenever I see patients and we're talking about this, I kind of, if I see on their x-rays they're a candidate for a partial, I talk to them about the pros and cons and we kind of hash it out about, you know, which way to go with that. Well, those are great factors to keep in mind when making a decision. And there has been a lot of advancements in surgery. Say somebody had a knee replacement 10 years ago. Now there's a lot of new advancements, like I was just saying. Can you tell us about orthopedic surgery and tell us about the use of robotics and sensors in knee surgery? Sure. So there's been a lot of changes in the way that we do knee replacement, even in the last five and 10 years. The anesthesia is much better the way we're doing. People are recovering and walking faster. We're using combinations of medications that reduce the need for, you know, narcotics after surgery. We're doing special blocks that help numb things up after surgery to make it less painful. And then there's been a lot of, exactly as you said, you know, technological advancements in the way that we do kind of knee replacement surgery. So one thing is in uh, robotics, people have started to use some robotics for putting knee replacements in to help guide some of the cuts. People are using things like navigation, meaning that it's almost like a GPS for in your knee where it kind of helps you align the parts and figure out where the parts ought to be. And there's even sensors. You know, I use a technology uh, where basically there's a pressure sensor that you put in while you're doing the knee replacement surgery, and it gives you the forces on either side of as the knee as it's moving around. So the way we used to do it in the past was we'd make all our cuts, we'd put in a kind of rectangular block, in during the surgery, and you kind of wiggle the knee around and say, yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, That's the way everybody's done it. That's kind of the majority of the way people do knee replacements even now. Uh, The new technology with sensors is you put in that same block, but that block has digital sensors in it. And there's a computer screen that says, well, on the inside of the knee, there's, you know, 30 pounds of force. On the outside of the knee, there's 25 pounds of force, and these parts are rotated three degrees, and it gives you all this extra information. And that's really helpful for helping to balance the knee. You know, you think when you take your car in and they rotate your tires, you know, they're balancing it out and aligning everything. This is kind of the same concept except in the knee. And, you know, the studies that have looked at this show that knees that are balanced in this way, they tend to have a less knee, a better motion, less need for going in to kind of manipulate or gain additional motion. People tend to be more satisfied with the knee replacements that are balanced on this sensor. Uh, So the early data has been very encouraging for this kind of technology. So data collection then on the knee itself has become very important in really dialing that surgery in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, being able to get more information uh, for me while I'm doing the operation is really helpful to be able to fine-tune things. 
You know, there's a lot of uh, finesse things to balancing a knee and a lot of the things that we do. And in the past, you know, there was a lot of kind of just eyeballing it. You know, we did the best we could with the tools that we have. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of new tools that are coming out to kind of help us make that better. Uh, so I've been working with that and, you know, continuing to collect data on the patients where I do surgery on and tracking their outcomes and all that as well. So, you know, I'm part of doing all that, too. And Dr. Balch, if you could wrap it up for us quickly, what else do we need to know about knee revisions and the latest technologies and replacements? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, knee replacement, it's a great operation. It's a pain-relieving uh, procedure to help improve function. And, you know, if you're not walking well, if you're having pain, it's loose, it's giving out on you, you're falling down, or you feel like something, you know, just isn't quite right or was never quite right, that can be a good reason to get it checked out. Uh, the other thing I tell folks, which not everyone knows, not everyone realizes that the knee replacement is meant to last 10 to 15 years. So I've had some patients where they had their knee replacement done, you know, 15 or so years ago. They had been doing great, and then all of a sudden it starts to not quite work as well, and they don't realize that the plastic can wear out. If you go get that checked out, it's pretty easy to see on an x-ray if your plastic is worn out, and that can be a pretty easy fix. You go in and you just pop in a new plastic. You don't necessarily have to take the whole thing apart and completely redo everything. You just redo the plastic, and then you're you know back to the way it was when it was put in. So if you, if you stay on top of it, it's pretty easy to fix that. If you wait too long and it starts to damage the metal parts and all that, then everything's got to come out. Uh, so I generally tell folks, I say, if it's been a really long time since you've seen any orthopedic doctor about a knee replacement, it might be a good time to kind of get it checked out, and just get an x-ray and make sure everything's doing okay. Well, thanks, Dr. Balch. I appreciate your time. And for more information, please visit DignityHealth.org slash Bakersfield. That's DignityHealth.org slash Bakersfield. This is Hello Healthy, a Dignity Health podcast. I'm Bill Klaproth. Thanks for listening.